Good evening, Seaside. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. My name is Reverend Bobby Becker. I'm a visiting minister from Northway. I brought the rain with me this evening, so. Thank you. You're so welcome. I do that all the time. Anyway, we welcome you to this beautiful Wednesday night service. It's almost like a baptism, it feels like. Um, but it's, this is the time in which we come together in community, and I'm so grateful to be here. Practitioner Brian Atkins, he's going to actually take us in deeper and open us with prayer. Good evening. I am Brian Atkins, and I have been a practitioner here for about 12 years here at Seaside. And I will be doing your reading this evening. But before we go there, please join me in prayer. And I know that God is all there is. God is that all-loving, all-caring source of divinity and inspiration that permeates everything and everyone. And I know that we are all one with God. We are one with the source of power the source of wisdom and knowledge, the source of all that is and all that will ever be. Closer to us than our breath, that is where God is. And I give thanks in advance in knowing that this evening here at Seaside tonight, each of us receives exactly that which we are here for. As the words flow forth from Robin, Reverend Bobby Becker, each of us is touched. Each of us receives a shift, a whole new inspiration. And we in turn take that message out into the world and pass it on to others. And consciousness expands throughout the world. So I simply turn this time over to the hands of God and know that it is perfect. And now I would like to invite those of you who have not lit a candle to come up and light a candle and Ari will lead us into meditation and song.
Thank you, Jim and Aria. That was truly beautiful. So this evening's theme is recognizing the light within. And what I love about this topic is that it, it shines a light on the, the beauty and the power that lies within each and every one of us. And quite often it's very easy for a lot of us to, um, especially in these times, feel perhaps a sense of like disconnecting from that love essence that is within us and perhaps maybe even giving up on our dreams. And so one of the things that I really loved about practitioner training was that that helped, helps one to connect with that sense of love within themselves. And part of the process of going through that is you begin to dig through a lot of the stuff that's kind of bringing you down, like things that maybe you feel negative about yourself and things like that. And as you can imagine, going through this process initially isn't always a lot of fun. But as you begin to shine a new light on that, you begin to see that even with those flaws that we're all perfect and whole and complete exactly as we are. And then through the process, you also begin to see the power that is within each and every one of us. And so our reading this evening um, comes from one of my favorite motivational speakers um, who passed away in 1989 named Earl Nightingale. And it, it also talks about that divinity that, that lies within us. And he says that before the atomic age, chemistry professors used to say that a person's worth from a strictly chemical standpoint was about $32 on the going market. In recent years, 
this view has undergone a startling change. Scientists now calculate that if the electronic energy in the hydrogen atoms of your gut body could be utilized, you could supply all the electrical needs of a large, highly industrial country for nearly a week. DuPont scientists said that the atoms of our body contain a potential energy of more than 11 million kilowatt hours per pound. The average person, by estimate, is worth about 85 million, excuse me, billion dollars. Moreover, the electrons in the atoms of your body are not just particles of matter. They are waves of living imagery. And these waves ripple out and spread themselves in patterns of light. And as they move, they sing. If you had the proper hearing aid, you could hear a great flow merging with the waves of neighboring atoms. And they not only sing, they shine. If you stand in front of an infrared camera in a completely dark room, the screen will show you from top to toe as a glistening, radiating, gleaming form. In short, you're a whole lot more than meets the casual eye. Add to all this the fact that to try to reproduce your mind mechanically would cost many billions of dollars and begin to see yourself for what you really are, an amazing, infinitely valuable creature. And not only are you immensely valuable as a human being, you are unlike any other human being who ever lived or ever will live. You are unique. So now I would like you to give a warm welcome to Reverend Bobby Becker. Good evening. It's really a pleasure to be here. Um, Debbie McDonald and I are friends. We went to school together. We had a chance to get to know each other in, in such a myriad of ways. And um, I was grateful for the opportunity to come speak here. And I know that all of you are wishing her the best as she um, is now embarking on something beautiful and new and huge, which really is a lot about Debbie. I mean, she has this just beautiful presence. So um, um, I think of her often um, in this place that she's in now up in Monterey. Um, this is a really interesting time of year. The holiday season has uh, the, the capacity and the capability of transformation. And it does because there's many stories that are similar to the one story that seems most prevalent in our culture at this time of year. The story is full of mystery and it's full of intrigue. And it speaks a lot to how our lives unfold if we really take a moment to pause and understand for ourselves what some of the stories that are out there, but specifically this one, might mean for us. The Christmas story, and I speak to the Christmas story, which is the birth of Jesus, is one of those beautiful stories. And I speak to it because it is our story. And it is our story because it's about rebirth. It is about birth. It is about being born again. It is about absolutely every way in which you could sp spin that or say that. And it's what happens to us continually and throughout our lives. There's this beautiful young couple in Nazareth, Joseph and Mary. And Joseph finds out that Mary is pregnant. And um, it's a little disturbing for him because he also knows that it's not his. And in that time, that was, a, that was actually something that wasn't very safe for a woman to be pregnant with child from another man or out of wedlock. And when you read the story, it's not really clear if they'd been married yet, but he knew it, he had not been intimate with her and therefore it was not his. 
And so he loved Mary, but in his mind, he was going to, in essence, separate from her. But an angel appeared to him and said to him that, that he need not worry, that Mary had conceived of a child through the Holy Spirit, and that this child would be born, and that child would be special, and that child would be the King of Kings. That is the story that is told in Matthew, and the story is told in Luke. And Joseph accepts it willingly. So he packs up Mary, we think puts her on a donkey, at least that makes it really interesting, right? And he said, let's go to Bethlehem, which is about 90 miles away. Now imagine just a moment. Do you hear that rain? Whenever this story is told, the weather is the worst. You know? The, the, the challenges of the time, can you imagine walking, it's supposedly anywhere between 70 and 90 miles pregnant? That would take a while. So we guess that she was pregnant but not yet ready to give, to give birth. And they make it to Bethlehem and there is no room in the inn. I mean, could you have any more challenges? <laughs> I, I did not have a child myself. I have a child, but, but, she, but I did not birth this child. But I can't imagine having more challenge in this moment to give birth at this time in the situation and circumstances. So this child is born in Bethlehem in a manger because the inns were full. Now I imagine that the innkeepers in seeing this woman ready to give birth were probably a bit intimidated. So maybe there was room, but maybe this was too much. So, so the story unfolds, not unlike our own lives sometimes. Where right before there is this moment of aha, this moment of birth, this moment of birth of, an, of the idea of who we are, we walk through amazing challenges to come to that realization. From the standpoint of the symbology around the story of the birth of Jesus, Mary represents that intuitive love. Joseph represents wisdom. And the two combined give birth to this child that is not unlike any one of us who are born from this same divine DNA. Each one of us being an expression of God in which as we are born, we are, as, they, as was said of Jesus, the King of Kings, the Queen of Queens, the King of Kings, all of us being one of, being of that. Jesus being that beautiful example of what is to be, what could be for each one of us what we can come to know. It is the story of our own transformation. And each year, this Christmas story is the reminder of that. And I know for me, there are some years that I'm caught up in the commercialism of it. There's like 23 holidays in December. I know a few of them. But there's so much happening in that month. And used to, it started after Thanksgiving. Now it starts right before Halloween. So we have even more time. We can either look at it, more time to be caught up in it or more time to consider it. But the birth of Jesus represents the birth of Christ consciousness on our planet the opportunity to come to know who we truly are. Again, it is our story. I found in my own life that examples show up every time in my own life, right before I give a talk or right before I'm about to do something that demonstrate my own sort of aha or my own awareness of the fact that even, even me, even me, 
that I am special, that I'm a child of God, and that, that, that in my life, things happen to remind me of that. Yesterday, yesterday I had lunch with my sister, and she's a year younger than me. And as children, we were really close. I mean, if, and I was, a year, I was a year older, but she was stronger and bigger than me. Thank God, because my brothers, it took somebody like that. I have three brothers, and they were tough, and um, man, it was, it, 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 every day was survival. And our household, we, it, it was tough in our household. There was a lot going on. And I remember um, my fondest memories of my sister are many times her and I coming together, we shared a room, and, and helping each other walk the path that we had been called to walk. She, I was not very good at hair and makeup, and she was very good. In fact, I just as soon leave it alone. My mother was constantly sending me back into wherever we put our makeup on to do it, do it better. And we went through a period of time in our 20s where we separated. Um, old hurts that had come up. I came out. That'll do it to any family. At least back then it did. And when I came out, it was really difficult for my family. And there was a long process of healing. And for both them and, and myself coming to understand that each one of us have a path with that. And I must say, it is a remarkable and beautiful path if we let it. Each one of us have that own coming out, whatever it might be, which is coming to the truth of who we are, the purpose of our life, whatever it might be. Yesterday, as my sister and I were sitting there, we've reconnected in the last year or so. My mother passed about five years ago, and when she did, the family kind of went sideways in some respects, which happens sometimes. But as I was sitting with her yesterday, and we were having this most amazing conversation, we were talking about forgiveness, we were talking about letting go, we were talking about, in, with compassionate terms, about each other and our family and what we had been through. As I was sitting there, and even afterwards, I had this beautiful sense that there was a birth of a new relationship, and that it, regardless of what happens in the future, because the story continues to get to unfold, regardless of that, there was this conversation that we were having that was, the, 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 what was so beautiful about it, it was more of the heart conversation that we were having than the words that were shared. She shared with me feelings she had that I was not aware of, and I shared with her feelings that I had had over the years, evolved feelings. Not feelings of blame or feelings of you did this or he did this, but it was really these beautiful expressions of feelings that sometimes we just, we wish for this at this time of year. Healing, reconciliation, birth. And I found this to be truly extraordinary as it was happening because I was also observing it as it was happening. And then it, when it was over and I texted her afterwards and I said, that was such a beautiful time that we spent together and I'm so grateful that we get to do that. And she responded, of course, you know, me too. There was something she said that I thought was so sweet. She said, um, I, really, I really enjoy spending time with you. Now, isn't that something you just would love to hear from a sibling or a child or a parent or, or a friend? I really love spending time with you. In that moment, I felt that birth. I felt that beautiful rebirth of, an ex of how I was seeing the relationship with my sister. And it, it, it took me to a new place, a new place of seeing and a new place of being. And I 
and I and as I was had left her and I had to go do a, a group at my center, I come from In Spirit, which is up in Mission Viejo. I'm on my way and I the the, the holiday lights are shining and there's a this guy pulls up in a in a van and he's dancing all over the van and I'm I'm waiting and the van is rocking and then there's a car that comes up next to me and the he's got this guy got lights all over his car and and the world was lit. Now the interesting thing about that is we're not always in a place to see that. Sometimes we're caught up and we don't. We're not in that moment of seeing that, and I'm guilty of it myself, but in that moment, it was the song that, they were, that, that, um, that our vocalist and pianist were doing earlier, was Silent Night, Holy Night. Now, it wasn't silent, but it sure felt holy. But there was something in that moment that was within me that silent spot within me, that beautiful space that's within all of us, that spoke that, again, Bobby, yes, you are a child of God. And so, and my sister the same. And each person I came into contact with last night, I just had that kind of feeling that carried me through the rest of the evening. Now, these kinds of experiences don't, believe me, if they happened every holiday, I'd be thrilled, wouldn't it? But I don't think it needs to happen every holiday. But I think what, it, what does need to happen is I need to be open to the fact that, first of all, with my sister and I, I know she had a moment of awakening for herself, and so did I. On this spiritual journey of life, it, we, it has to start here and it has to start within us. And even at, at this holiday season, which is very, very interesting, everything is amplified. Feelings of pain and sorrow and sadness, feelings of happiness and joy and love, everything is amplified. What do we say in Science of Mind? It's all God. It is. It absolutely is. All of it. Because I can also remember other holidays where things were not as bright, where there was sadness. But I also remember that in that sadness, there was something within me that said, where silent night, holy night, something down deep knew that something was happening. I could choose to see that. Because I know that in this, even in this time that we're in, there's a lot of trepidation about what's to come. There's some fear about what's to come. And there's speculation about what is happening and what is the story that is out there. And I guarantee you that same speculation was happening around the birth of Jesus. What it meant what was to happen and what was to come and what ended up happening wasn't what they expected. The story of Jesus is about the spiritual awakening of our universe, of our planet. Let's just start there. And that spiritual awakening happened in the moment in which there was a star, there was a young couple, there was a baby. Within that story, there's another piece that I find really interesting. Three Magi. And three Magi had foretold of this, and they had come into, had come and talked to Herod, who was the ruler of that part of, of, of uh, the Middle East at that time, and forgive me, the name is escaping me. But at the time, the Roman Empire, he was in charge of the area in which Mary and Joseph were traveling, which was Judea which was Bethlehem, which was Nazareth, which was Jerusalem. And his home was in Jerusalem. So these three magi had been telling about this baby's birth, that the king of kings would be born. Herod's advisors had heard about it. And he asked that the three magi be brought to him, and he asked them, not because he was interested 
about this miraculous birth that was to happen be because he was concerned that a ruler would take over. And he was very, wanted to make sure that his place in the Roman Empire was safe and secure. So he told the three magi, go and find this baby and come back and report to me so that I may worship him. Not true. The three magi, not knowing really, went and followed the star, the star, the guiding light, our intuition. Those moments in our life when, we, when something speaks to us and tells us to go, to follow this, 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 this idea or whatever it might be in our life. So they did. And they found the baby in a manger with its mother and father. And they presented the baby with three gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That night, the Magi had a dream. The three of them had a dream. And the dream was that they were not to go back and tell Herod of the baby's birth. So they just went home. The thing I found interesting about that story when I was reading it again, and something I hadn't really thought about, was that once you have an awakening, you can never go back. You can never go back. You can never go back to that which you, because it's no longer true, and you know it. And once we have this awakening moving forward in the progression of our spiritual evolution is the direction we must go, and we know that. Sometimes along the way, and believe me, it's not a linear path, is it? I swear, it's this, and it's this, and it's kind of over here, and it's kind of over here. At least that's what it feels like sometimes. But all, even with that, we all know we cannot go back. And the Magi knew that, and they went home. And they carried with them that spiritual awakening into their own lives. And I'm sure shared that with all those they came in contact with. The gifts that they gave them, which was the gold, which represent the riches of spirit. There's a richness in this life. When we come to understand the truth of who we are, there's a rich, richness in it. And that was the gold that they gave them. The frankincense, which is the beauty of spirit. It's that divine beauty that we know that all things are beautiful, that life is beautiful. And then in that moment, in our own lives, if we can stop and pause and look the beauty that is this life, it does not come easy, but there is beauty in it. The myrrh, which is the eternality eternality of spirit. We are immortal. And yet so often we live in the fear and forget that we live forever. We have no beginning. We have no end. That we were born with this divine DNA that we don't even have to tell it what to do. It just does it. And it does it as us. How, how, how good can it be? Sometimes it does it as us in a way that we don't understand. Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, he says, change is simply motion within life. And most often, the thing we battle with is the fact that we don't want things to change. And we're afraid if they change, will they change to the worse? That's always, that, you know, will the, will the other shoe drop? I love that one, right? Someone once told me there are three ways to look at life, and I love this. There's pessimism, which is I look at life as if in the negative sense, that something always bad will happen, right? There's optimism, which I look at life and say that my best will, will always turn out in this, in, in this situation. But there's a third way that I didn't think about, and that's a realism. And realism, if it's not working out this way, then I need to adjust my sails.
What's really great about this science of mind and this practice is that we have tools in which we can use so that we can see, as Brian talked about, the light within, as we can actually see that light within. As we can actually go within and remember the truth of who we are. And those tools are necessary. Meditation is something that we almost push as a means. Not in a sense, and I say this all the time, just as a reminder if there's anyone in the room has not tried it, is not in a way to clean the mind or to clear the mind, but in a way for us to recognize what we're thinking most of. What we perceive, and truly, truly, ultimately, which we learn as practitioners is, what do we believe about ourselves and the world that we live in? It's important, this holiday. This is a unique holiday. It's a holiday in which we can choose to, in essence, succumb to the fear of what may be happening in our world, in our nation. No matter which side you're on. Or we can choose to be part of something in its perfect unfoldment, such as the story of Jesus, which is we have to trust that who we are is part of the plan. That each one of us have a unique and divine purpose that, that is unfolding right now. And how we play moving forward is how it unfolds. And it is important for us to remember always, or often, I should say, to remember often that this time of year, that what this time of year represents, again, is that the Christmas story, the birth of really the Christ consciousness, the idea that we're divine, that all we need is already within us, that our value is more than $37. That there's of infinite value that you can't even quantify because we truly still do not understand the magnificence, the mystery of who we are as spiritual beings playing on this human plane. So this year, Let's try something, if you haven't tried it yet. Let's move into that space, remembering that this is our time. Every person that is alive on this planet, right here and right now, in this time, has a part to play. And that part to play is to not play small. Don't play small. Play it big. King of kings, the queen of queens, and everything in between. We are love embodied. We are a very event of that one mind. We are an event of God. Every breath we take and every step we take. So I invite you to remember that this time of year to remember that the birth of Jesus is our reminder, our reminder, to be bold, to play it in the divine arena, and to go nothing less than that. So let's, let's pray together, shall we? So just in this beautiful space of seaside, 
the rain washing away all that is unnecessary for us in moving forward at this time. I just sense and know that there is only God in this moment. That God is the beauty and the love and the joy, but also the sadness and the sorrow that is what life is. All of it. And I am one with it, as is each person in this room. As we come together at this holiday time, I bless each one of us with the divine idea remembered that the Christ consciousness lives as each one of us. That we are the divine incarnate. The DNA that is us comes from the best source. And we walk and talk representing that which is God. So as that beautiful baby was born so long ago to remind us of our own spiritual transformation and evolution, I just say yes for each one of us, yes. That I take this and I move and breathe knowing this. And that I allow life to unfold knowing that the story that is taking place is in its divine, perfect, right order. It unfolds with perfection. Not as I want it to, but in its perfection. And I just surrender to it. So I bless this time together knowing that it is all done in the mind of God. We walk away with that which we need, which we require, and we have all that we need to move forward in this. So in that, I just say, thank you, God. And I release my word. I let it be and I let it go. And so it is, amen. Thank you.
Thank you, Aria. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. And thank you, Jan Garrett, for a beautiful song. Beautiful. What a perfect evening. Thanks for sharing yes, it with me. Yes, well, thank you. And yeah. great to have you here. Thank that you. Was beautiful. Um, at this time, we do our offering. And I think typically we have something on the screen, but we're kind of playing it casual tonight. So I'm just going to ask our ushers to come forward. How about you come over here? Just because, you know. <laughs> so I just know the beauty and the prosperity that is this community. There's an abundance that is present here that is shown both by the creativity that shows up at this beautiful place, the people, and the abundance that comes in the form of all that you see here. So I just bless this as we move forward. And so if you just take the offering that you have and you put it on your heart and you just give it that <clears throat> special blessing that is yours. So as we move into this place, and I'm just going to ask this real quick. Do you guys come back up here or do you just go away? All right, I'm going to bless it now. All right. <laughs> I'm new here. <laughs> so I just bless this offering that we've brought forth today, knowing that it goes forth as seaside and it manifests into that form that is perfect for this community and all it supports. Knowing this, I just give, ex I express my gratitude to all those that are here and give to this community. And in doing so, if you'll just join me in saying, and so it is. Amen. Thank you. We three kings of Orient dark, bearing gifts, we travel so far, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yon the star. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, I just wanted to um, thank a few people that have put this together. It's amazing what it takes to put together such a beautiful service. Um, our practitioners, which are Brian Atkins, who did our reading and our invocation, and Rick Marika in the back, who's holding the light. Thank you. Thank you for that. Brian prepped me this whole before I came up here, and he did a magnificent job. Um, is it Araya? Aria, I, I want to get it right, so that's why. Aria, okay. And James on piano. Yeah. What a beautiful, thank you so much. You. It was a joy to work with you tonight. Um, on uh, sound, we had Melanie Bennett. Thank you, Melanie. Thanks for taking care of me as well. Gregory Neville. Is that right, Gregory? And then our coordinator, Jenny Mills. Jenny, thanks for taking care. Absolutely. Um, tonight is the last Wednesday night gathering for 2016. They're going to resume the, uh, the Wednesday night gathering uh, January 4th at 7 p.m. And I'm guessing you're having a candlelight um, service on Friday, so make sure you join that. And there's some special activities here on Christmas Day that for those of you that would like somewhere to go on Christmas Day, and, and family just seems too big. So I always say that. Um, with that... Um, also, join us in the family room after service for refreshments and uh, have a chance to sit, come say hi to me if you didn't get a chance to do so. So I'm just going to invite the audience to stand for our closing song and invite our practitioner back up here. And anyone else I left off, please come up here. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's up to me. It's up to me to give up my heart. To give up my heart. Love is my decision. 
ocean. No one else. And no one else can tell me to start. Tell me to start. No. Once I decide. Once I decide to change my mind. To change my mind. Love will show me how. Love will show me how. Love is my decision. Decision. Right here and now. Right here and now. Love is my decision. Love is my decision. It's up to me. It's up to me. To dance down that road. To dance down that road. Love is my decision. Love is my decision. No one else can lighten my load. No one else can lighten my load. Once I, decide Once I decide to change my mind, to change my mind. Love, will show me how. love will show me how. Love is my decision. Love is my decision. My decision. My decision. Right here and now. Right here and now. My decision. My decision. Right here and now. Thank you, everyone. All right. Join us for refreshments and happy merry merry to all. And uh... have a holly, jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year I don't know if there'll be snow So have, have a cup of, of cheer so Have a holly jolly Christmas And when you walk down the street Say hello to friends you know Thank you from all of us here at Seaside, and we'll see you real soon.